Hello everyone, welcome to the video on IPO models. And today's learning goal is to learn how to solve basic problems and design our solutions using the IPO model. And today the topics will include going through the three stages of the IPO model and looking at some example problems. To start off our lesson, um, to learn about our IPO model, uh, we're going to look at a programming problem. The problem states that we are to create a program that works as a parking meter. The IPO model is a system analysis or software engineering approach to solve introductory programming problems. And the three letters of I, P, and O stands for input, processing, and output. An IPO model solves a problem in such a way that it receives a requirement from the user or the environment, and then we process it, then we'll supply the result provision to the user and the, or the environment. Let's look at input. Input is a way of analyzing the inputs that the program requires to solve the given problem. So going back to our example problem of the parking meter, we can have different inputs, such as coins or credit card. If we have coins, we can allow the inputs of 5, 10, or 25 cents, or a nickel, dime, or quarter. We can also have loony or toony, which are the dollar and the two dollar coins available in Canada. Then we also can accept credit cards such as Visa or MasterCard. And then we can have an input button where if the user or the environment clicks on the button, we'll print out the result when necessary. Then another important section of the um, input area is where we do a variable analysis. We're analyzing what kind of data needs to be held or and what variables the processing part will require. Um, and to do this, we need a variable name, we need the data type of the variable, and some potential values that we may look at. For example, for a parking meter, we can have a variable called coin, which is a type of float, and we can take a values of um, a nickel, dime, quarter, a loony, or toony. We can easily create a special type of variable or data type for this as well, but I think float will do. Whereas for cards, we don't really have a data type for cards, so we might want to create a special data type, and we can have the values of Visa or MasterCard. Then we have time, which is also another special type where we can take the values of either 5 minute, 10 minute, 30 minutes, or even an hour, and it will allow the user to mix and match so that they will get the right amount of time that they need. Then after we have analyzed the inputs and the variables, we look at processing, where we're analyzing how we would use the input to calculate or process our inputs and variables to solve our given problem. So for our parking meter, if our input was coins, we don't allow credit cards to be inputted, and every time a coin is inserted, we increase the time limit by the respective time. And then when the print ticket button is clicked, we'll print a ticket. And in the same um, idea, if an input was card, we don't allow coins to be inputted and we let the user set the time limit that they need and we print the ticket when the button is clicked. So when the button is clicked, we are doing what the output is supposed to do. So at output, we're stating the expected output after the processing is done. So for our parking meter, when the print button is pressed, we output a paper slip with a time limit. Let's move on to example problems. There are multiple problems in this slide and I'll be doing, doing solving problem number one with you and I highly encourage that you go through the other problems on your own to practice designing an IPO model for our problem. So problem number one states that the client has requested for a Fahrenheit to Celsius converting program. And a bit, one of the best ways to design an IPO model is to use an IPO table where you talk about the variables at the top and we talk about the three stages, the input processing and output. Um, so for a given problem, some of the variables that we might need uh, can be called uh, the user input, which, which is for our um, Fahrenheit degrees where um, this data type will be a type of float. So type of float, okay, let's fix our T. And we usually have, can have values like um, 100 Fahrenheit. 
Now, um, the user is going to be inputting that value. I don't think for this problem, we will need any other values. So during the input section, the user, user inputs the temperature in Fahrenheit. Then we need to process that input because we don't need any other input. Um, the temperature in Celsius, the temperature in Celsius, that will be our processing, is equal to the temperature of the Fahrenheit minus 32 all over 1.8. That is the formula or the equation to get to convert our Fahrenheit to Celsius. Then we need to just output um, the temperature. The temperature in Celsius is our result, which can be found from our processing. So this is a very easy, simple solution where we can just bring our found results so we might want another variable uh, temperature and Celsius to hold the result and that can be used as an output and this is all we would need require to do an IPO table for the first problem and there are various other problems in this slideshow I really recommend that you try them all and thank you for watching and stay classy